Before you start your next guys Any event, make sure you prepare it well. That will drastically improve your chance for success. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today we will be talking about the preparation of a Kaizen event and why it is so important. There's a couple of steps that you really want to do before you get together that multidisciplinary team of colleagues to fix a specific problem or improve a process. Now, the reason that you're bringing together people from different backgrounds, departments, is that the problem is usually a bit more complex than any one person can just fix within their own work setting. So think a bit about the preparation that is also needed to make sure that those people have a great start to work and that many of the obstacles have been removed before you start already. So work through the next six points in order, which is also why we'll be putting them on the board in order, and make sure you got these things done before you really bring the team together. And the very first thing to do is to make sure that you know what the scope and goals are going to be. Now, that might sound super logical, but please, this needs to be done before you even select any team members. That, that actually is a step later on. So make sure that you know what you are and are not looking at in this event and what people are really trying to achieve from it. So why is this team being brought together? What are management expectations, process owner expectations? Really important to jot that down at the beginning. Then we do some initial data gathering. So this is not the only data gathering that you will be doing, but before you really start the process, you already want to collect a bit more data. It can come from your current systems, just stuff already in the systems, but you want to measure sort of, at least define where is that problem. So within the scope and goals, what are you gonna to have to be looking at? Where is the variation? What do we see? This is so important because it triggers things like is it going to be a problem with a root cause? Is it going to be somewhere on a timeline things suddenly dropped? What type of variation do we see? Where in the process do we see it? Is it a thing between shifts with big differences of shifts of operators or not? So that informs you so much on how long it will take and which people you need to have on your team. You need to set that up. If the initial data collection does not work, that also gives you a clue where you have to work on the data collection itself. And you may want to do sort of a two-stage approach to a Kaizen event, where you have sort of a mini group, core team, already working on better data collection first, and then involve the rest of the team. Because you want to be able to check your assumptions and your improvements with data coming from the process. So then we select the team members and who's going to be the team lead and we set our expectations and timeline. Now this you can do sort of at the same time. I would say get the team first but because they are so linked. See if you are going to put a team of eight or ten people there you would expect that it is also shortened a bit and you do this only when you expect to get big gains when you know that you don't really have the needed, needed experts available, maybe from the central team, that one specific technologist that you needed just isn't going to be available for this time frame, then you know you have your own technologist that needs to have a bit more time in the field or a bit of study, things like that, right? So they are linked, but get the people you will have available. Make sure that you have a leader, then you also know the experience level of that leader, who is going to be that see more senior manager in the team also check out the video on how to select and uh, the team members and which roles they have within a kaizen event and then you set not just the goal but specific expectations so the goal could be to improve uh, the uh, the scrap levels reduce the waste but the expectations now that you have some data and you also have some people already selected probably the team leader is already thinking along with you the 
expectation is that we can half it or we can remove something, uh, eliminate something with 90 to 100% of one specific type of scrap, which leads to an overall waste reduction of 2.6%. All examples, right? And by what time? Is this going to be a two week, a one or two week Kaizen event? One week Kaizen events are very strong tools. High intensity, the whole prep needs to be done before, by the way. Uh, high intensity, get everybody together. They work brilliantly on organizational processes or where you expect an organizational change. If you expect more of a machine or process change, probably pick a longer timeline, even for the simple factor of they need to be doing production trials to prove what they actually want to improve. So uh, that timelining, what, what is it gonna be? One week, maybe two or three weeks, three month project, get those expectations out. And then make sure you have the resources in your team, your human resources available for that timeline as well. By the way, in this process, the team leader, but also your process owner and that more senior management member, they are involved in this whole setup already. Then, you set up the room. Now, this can definitely be an actual room that you have available, especially if it's like the one-week type of Kaizen events, the, the very high-intensity one to maximum two-week Kaizen events. You probably have a dedicated war room for your Kaizen event. Set that up. Make sure you've got the cookies and the, and the coffee and tea and stuff like that. Make sure you've got flip charts and whatever you need, right? good markers. But also, this sort of means set up the resources that the team will need. So get stuff into the calendar, get your people, uh, but also make sure you've got your digital archive, that people have access to the data, uh, that maybe you have organized one or two spare laptops just to make sure that any uh, people who normally don't have laptops for their work, just have them available during the event so that they can always work together with you and indeed all of the more practical tools of just making sure that everybody has a good time and can you know work hard play hard type of because when you do a kaizen event especially the shorter ones and they are very beneficial to your company you're going to be asking a lot of those people so you're going to be asking a lot of thinking and focus and flexibility make sure that you have areas to relax again a bit or to separate from the group for some critical thinking or working on something and stuff like that just needs to be arranged. You don't want to be running into those sort of stupid tool walls in the middle of your Kaizen event. And make sure you prep a good kickoff. Now you want to train the team and what you're gonna do, but more importantly is that you also share this sort of work that you did, especially that goal with the data collection and your expectations. Where do they come from? What do we already see? What are the facts of the case? So think about it like a CSI, a criminal investigation, where they go to the Gemba, and I would advise you to do that as well. They look at things, but before that, they first get a small report, right? It's this and this happened. Uh, this is when, this is who was involved. Now let's check, let's go over the data and the actual uh, Gemba stuff. And so the, the roles are split up and then they come back together and you have this discussion of which facts do we see and what do we see happening. And that all is sort of part of that kickoff, but especially the before we hit the shop floor, this is how we're going to look at it. This is what type of problem we're going to be running into to be fixing, which you know from your own prep that if you are the team lead, you are definitely already aware of this make sure you prepare a kickoff where you share this with everybody. Half of your team probably is not used to being in Kaizen events. Uh, they are not generally in this type of activity. Make sure they also feel comfortable. Explain the process, explain the timeline, explain what is expected of them. You can almost not over communicate these expectations, process, the team, what you want to be doing together during the Kazen event to your team members, right? So before you do that kickoff, you make sure that you know what you're touching and not touching, why, that you have the basic data so that you can actually select who should be working on that. 
and what you can reasonably expect as an outcome from this Kaizen event, then you make sure that everybody has the tools to work effectively in what is sort of hopefully going to be a bit of a higher stress, quick thinking, quick work situation, and that you get everybody on the same page during your first meeting by having an effective kickoff. So if you want to know how you know, to lead teams like these, uh, there is also a nice Kaizen leader training that uh, we do with the people at beltcourse.com. Sometimes I'm your trainer, there's a whole set of other trainers. Go check it out. There's a nice free version and there's a bigger version where you really have some practical training uh, in there as well. Really nice hybrid training. For now, I wish you the best of luck prepping your next Kaizen event. And as always, don't forget to also enjoy that continuous improvement journey.